The gap between professional lighting fixtures and lights that the average DJ or band member can afford is shrinking every year. Today, I'm gonna to take a look at a high-powered moving head wash light from Eliminator Lighting that's bridging that gap. Let's get into it. What's up everybody, my name is Jordan. Welcome to the Phase Reviews YouTube channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. If you're a subscriber, welcome back as always. On the table on my left is the new Eliminator Lighting Striker Wash. This is a high powered moving head wash light for mobile DJs, bands, venues, bars, clubs, you name it, that's got a lot of great features. Multi-zone LED control, zoom capabilities, and even a full color LCD menu to access all of the different features. In this video today, I'm going to show you what comes in the packaging, talk about what I consider to be the most important standout features of this light, the pros and the cons, and then give you a demo of it in action, both here in the basement, highlighting all the features, and at an actual event with over a thousand people. Before we dive into that though, make sure that you like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos coming down the pipeline. Enough about that, let's take a look at the Eliminator Lighting Striker Wash. So with a light this big, I have a pair of them, but they would take up the entire table if I were to do an unboxing. So I have the light already set up. It's been in use at a gig, but I did want to show you what comes in the package. This is about how big it is. We'll talk about the uh, size specifications of the light in a moment, but besides the actual fixture, you're going to get, of course, your user manual that walks you through all the different functions. And something I really like to see, instead of just your regular old mounting bracket that you put on with a screw and an Allen wrench, which we see in some of the more lower end lighting effects, we get an Omega bracket. Quick turn to attach uh, capability. It's much easier than those other things that require an Allen key. It's made of really thick, heavy metal, and this thing works fantastic for flying this from trussing or a T-bar. You're also going to get a power cord, of course, which is PowerCon locking power capability, and it just really adds to the professional feel of this light. Now, let me uh, grab my little sticky note here and talk about a few of the most important specs on the Striker Wash. This is a 200 128 watt moving head. That's pretty remarkable given that this fixture comes in under a thousand dollars. It's a ton of output and as you'll see a little later on in this video, it easily filled a very large college gymnasium with over a thousand students inside. This has, uh, let me make sure I get this right, this has uh, 19 12 watt 4-in-1 RGBW LEDs. The fixture itself is pretty uh, hefty, a really good size. This is kind of out of the pocket small moving headlights and more into the professional territory. It's 8 inches by 12 inches by 15 inches tall. It comes in at 18.1 pounds and you definitely feel the weight. Uh, when I carry the two of these together in their case, it is heavy. Now, don't let that deter you though. When you need that output, you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit of weight. This has a zoom functionality, which I think is one of the highlights and allows this fixture to work in a variety of settings. A lot of people can choose between a moving head uh, spotlight, a moving head wash light, or a moving head beam light. With the zoom range of six degrees to 50 degrees, this really functions as both a beam and a wash. Now, six degrees is not as narrow as a one or a two, which you're gonna see in dedicated beam fixtures, but it's enough to make a noticeable uh, column of light when you use this with some atmosphere like fog or haze. With the wider 50 degree beam, angle, you're going to get a big diffuse cone of light that will cover a large area of your event or your dance floor. When it comes to the construction of the light, you've got your standard kind of plastic housing that you see on most lighting fixtures nowadays. Um, of course, the most important parts, the base, uh, the internal components are going to be made of metal, but to cut down on the weight of this fixture, you've got a very hardy plastic outer coating. On either side of the fixture are two handles to assist with lifting, carrying, and setting up this light. Really grateful for that when I've got something this big. Uh, there are four feet on the bottom that you can use to just set this on a totem or on a stage or a ground package. And if you want to hang it, you can use that included Omega clamp to put it on some trussing or a tripod. Pod. Now, swinging around to the back, on the back of the actual moving head itself, we have got a three, a bundle of three fans. These are pretty loud. You can probably hear them. 
okay? Those fans are going to be keeping the LED diodes cool, but if you are in a very, very quiet environment, just know that this is not a silent fixture. However, for most applications, that's not going to be an issue. Now you will see on the back here, we've got our power con in. We also have a power con out for power linking and three pin DMX in and out along with a power switch right there. The light itself is just super well made and it's gonna stand up to plenty of years of use on the road. Talking about some of the more internal features of this light, like I mentioned, this has three zones of LED control, an outer ring, an inner ring, and then a center diode. If you wanna enter the more complex DMX channel modes, we have a 13 and a 23. With that 23 channel mode, you'll be able to control each of those zones and do some really cool eye candy effects. If you want a more simplified DMX layout, you can use the 13 channel mode and still get a lot of control over the pan, tilt, fade, strobe, all of your standard parameters. For those of you that are doing weddings or photography or video work, this does have adjustable temperature white color. You can go from 3200 to 10,000 Kelvin. So from a very nice warm white up to a very cool white, depending on your needs. If you're not someone who uses DMX, you can of course access built-in sound active and auto programs via the LCD screen, which we're going to zoom in on in just a moment. You can even set these fixtures in a master and slave mode so that one will control the response of multiple fixtures. All right, so here is that full color LCD menu. In addition to the screen and the four buttons off to the right, we do have lights to show us that we have DMX signal and that the light is currently running. But to access the menu, you just hit one of the but uh, arrow buttons. We've got left, which is menu, right, which is enter, and then up and down to move between the different settings. The display is super clear and bright you can see it in dark environments and it automatically dims after a few seconds so if we hit uh there you go if we hit enter on dmx you can see we can choose our dmx address number right here just choose what you want and hit enter again and now we're back you can choose what mode we're in i'm in the 13 channel currently uh, and then if we hit menu again, you can also choose to deactivate the DMX signal. Moving over, we've got the parameter set so you can invert your pan and your tilt. You can add pan and tilt correction depending on your venue. You can inverse your display if you've got this hung upside down. You can adjust how bright the display is, the sound sensitivity for the sound active mode, uh, and you can even reset the fixture or do a factory restore and you can even adjust what the home position of the light is. Again, really well thought out for a variety of settings. Backing up to the menu, clicking over to the run mode, this is where we're gonna access our auto and sound settings. You can see both of those at the top, plus primary auto and primary sound, which take the uh, place of the old master and slave terminology. Moving down, we've got our manual mode right here. This is where if you just wanna dial in a specific uh, pan and tilt area and a zoom red, green, blue setting, if you just wanna dial in a static position, you can do that on this menu. And then system info, this is just where you're gonna access the time, how long the light's been running, what version you're on, the temperature even, which we're at 75 degrees Fahrenheit right now. This has been on for about 30 minutes and those LEDs are keeping it nice and cool. So those are all the different settings on the menu itself. Before I jump to the actual actual gig footage, I did set the light up in my basement to film a run through of all of the different features and options. I'll overlay that. So you can see, first of all, all the different color temperatures for the white settings. If you do need to use this in a more photography or videography oriented setting, I'll also show you all of the rich colors from the four in one diodes, the red, green, uh, blue, the uh, lime particularly looks really, really fantastic as well as the hot pink. And then I'll also show you a bit of movement with some haze down in the basement. This allows you to see the beam when you're in front of the fixture it looks really really nice especially again at that tight beam angle you're going to have a very defined sharp column of light now when we got this out to an actual event we had over a thousand people at this college dance we were in a very large ballroom and this easily hit the back wall no sweat was very identifiable from all of the other lighting fixtures in the room i had these set up on a tripod the pair of striker washes behind the dj booth shooting out over the crowd towards the back wall you can see in a couple of the shots that tighter six degree beam angle making a very defined spot you can definitely tell it apart from all of the other lights it easily kept up even even in this more well-lit room, it wasn't a completely dark environment. There were some areas around the edges where there were some refreshments and the lights were on. Even so, this was so bright and so vivid, even in a really large space. I was very impressed. It kept up all night, wasn't hot at the end of the night, didn't overheat. That's the benefit of the LEDs, which last for 50,000 hours, might I add. So you should never have any issues with the actual diodes themselves. And all in all, it just integrated perfectly well with the rest of the light show. 
overall, I'm super impressed with the Eliminator Lighting Striker Wash. It really is the perfect transition light for those DJs, venues, churches, bars, clubs that are trying to move from beginner, more entry level compact size fixtures up to something more professional, but aren't looking to drop thousands of dollars on top of the line lights. This has all of the output, the functionality with the zoom and the zone control that you would see in more expensive lights, but under a thousand dollars. Uh, I think this could be the mainstay of a lot of mobile DJs, unless you are at the very upper tier echelon needing the most high powered lights available. This is gonna cover the vast majority of a mobile DJ's needs. It's gonna stay in my arsenal for sure. I'm gonna be using this at tons of events in the future, and I just can't wait to get it out to my next event. If you wanna read more about this Eliminator Lighting Striker Wash, I'll include a link down below. I appreciate you watching today. Make sure that you subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos coming out in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.